A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. <laughs> Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Menem cast yet again. This time tri-weekly just because I didn't get around recording stuff with Vivek. Vivek is here with me today again. Say hello Vivek. Hi. <laughs> and yeah, we are going to talk about graphing functions today. Last time around we have talked about creating coordinate systems and we already teased it a tiny little bit, those graphing functions. And today we want to actually graph functions, also 3D graphing, etc. pp. And don't forget engineering clock out, also check out the second channel for more mathematics content. And we are going to go ahead and get started. Vivek is going to go ahead and get started with the number line feature implemented in Manum. Okay, so now let's talk about number lines. So number lines are pretty important because let's say you want to graph a function, you need axes, and they're essentially two number lines. So first let's talk about a regular one-dimensional number line. So I'm going to say n is equal to number line, and I'm just going to say self.add n. So let's take a look at what this looks like. All right, this seems pretty good. It's just a one dimensional number line. So what if I wanna make the number line only go from negative three to three? Well, there are parameters. So I can just say x min is equal to negative three, x max is equal to three. Now, if I run it again, let's see what happens. There we go, we have a smaller number line and this is probably much more useful than just having one infinite number line. There are other important things we can do. For example, let's say I want a tip over here. So I can say include underscore tip is equal to true. And what this does is it just adds a tip. So if I run it, you'll see how it looks. There you go. This is one way of doing it. And another thing we can do is we can actually increase the, uh, sorry, add numbers. So for example, let's say I want this to be zero and so on. I can say include underscore numbers. Is equal to true. So if I run it, there you go. There are other things we can do like add and change the frequency. So one thing we can all just do is go to the config of number line and we have all of these parameters to play with. So you can play with these if you want, but the one I'm going to be talking about is take frequency. So if I just change this to 0.5, it's going to add another line between each of these numbers. So 0.5. There we go. That seems pretty good. Now, yes. the reason why this is important is because uh, when we make axes, we can actually edit the number line config for each of the axes. We're going to talk more about that later. But for now, let's learn about what axes are and what they do. Yes. So right now, we just took a look at the number line, meaning it's just a real x axis in some way. But you can obviously add another number line to it on the y axis, for example, if you want to simulate a complex plane. This is one of the examples that you can make use of for parametric functions. And for this, you just let me exit the full screen here. You just need to add what we did last episode. So if you want to have a 2D graph, you are just going to add Y configurations to it. So right now for the X number line, we only said X min, X max, X tick fre frequency, but you can go for the same stuff on the Y axis. And we can go a step further. What you can also do is we can introduce a 3D scene, a 3D graphing scene basically. Okay, it's, it's just a graphing scene yet again. And you can actually add a z-axis to it. This is also something you can do. And then we would have a 3D graph and you can turn the camera around and it's still going to work out nicely. And for each and every axis, you can set the tick frequency. You can say, are there going to be any numbers? Aren't there going to be any numbers on this number line there? And so on, you can set the color of those number lines in some way. So there are a lot of options you can make use of. Adding on to what Papa Fami said, let's actually try and make a graph with some axes. So first I'm going to say a is equal to axes. 
And if you remember, he talked about the axis config. So within that, I can just use those parameters. So I can say x min is equal to negative 3, x max is equal to 3, y min is equal to negative 3, y max is equal to 3. And, and there we go, we have a 3 by 3 axis. But I want to add, let's say I want to add tips. Sorry, I don't want to add tips. Tips are added by default. So I can say number line config is equal to and within that i can put all of the parameters we talked about over here so for example i say i want actually why don't we just go to the definition of axes so here it says x-axis config and y-axis config so i actually made a mistake but we can just use axis config and within that i can say include tip is equal to false is it true by default yeah it's true by default so i can just copy this say include tip is equal to full. And if I add these axes, let's see how it looks like. Oh, I didn't change the variable name. And if I add this, there we go. We have a pair of axes. Now I want to add a function. So let's just do y is equal to x squared like we did last time. So I'm just going to say f is equal to function graph. That's the function you have to use, sorry, the class. And then we'll just say lambda x, or I'll just say self.func. And within over here, I'm just going to define something uh, as a function. So I'm just going to say def func self comma x, and then we return x to the power of 2. So x star star 2. So what if I just add both of them? Let's see how this works. There we go. We have a x squared function. But let's say I want the y maximum to only be 3. Let's say I want to cut out this part. So I can say x min is equal to square root of 3 because that's where it equals 3. And x max is equal to square root of 3. So x min is equal to negative math dot square root of 3 x max is equal to math dot square root of 3 so these are some parameters you can pass to function graph another important one is just color so let's say i want the color to be blue you can actually do the same thing that i've been doing the whole time and go to the definition and look at all of these so function graph actually extends something called param parametric function we're gonna, I'm going to talk about parametric function right after this. So let's just see how this is going to look before I talk about parametric function. So there we go. It looks pretty good. Okay, like I said before, function graph is a inherited class of parametric function. So if I actually change this to a parametric function, I misspelled parametric function. Now our function just takes an input t. So you know how parametric functions are. So we're gonna have three outputs, x comma y comma z, and our x and output is just gonna be t. The y output is just gonna be t squared. And the z output is just gonna be zero. So this is a return. It's we return an array of the three x comma y comma z. And instead of x min, we use t min. And if I go to the definition of this, there are a bunch of other parameters we can mess around with. So these two actually control how the function is graphed. So it's numerically graphing it. So we can use these two to make it more dense or less dense. So let me just graph this and let's see how it looks. There we go, it's the exact same function I talked about before. But the fun thing is we can actually talk about functions that we can't use in function graph so you know how par some parametric functions can, like a circle can't be expressed using function graph like f of x so i'm just going to do math dot sine of t over here and math cosine of t so doing that we have a well not a full circle because i forgot to do my bounds so my bounds can be negative sorry zero and two pi
There we go. We have a circle, and you can do ellipses and stuff. Interesting. So if, yep. So if I change this, I can say two into math dot sine of t, and we have a ellipse. That's really interesting with the parametric functions. I have never plotted one of those before, but that's really interesting. I was already wondering how you could plot like a circle or like a, yeah. a unit circle in the complex plane. This is what I was talking about before. Like you can interpret a 2D graph as the complex plane, for example. I think this already answers my question. This is pretty good. This is pretty good stuff. Okay, so now let's talk about 3D graphing. So I've already got a little bit of code over here. So for example, I have this axis config over here and then I have the 3D axes. So the axis config is pretty, it's just the same thing as putting these parameters over here. And all I've done here is define X min, X max, Y min, Y max, Z min, Z max. And this is pretty standard compared to this. And all of these same parameters pass down to these axes. And there are also a few additional ones we can use. So let me go to the definition of 3D axes. And you have z-axis config, whereas, for example, over here, you only had x-axis config and y-axis config. And light source. So this is basically where the light source is. And then I'm going to add a parametric surface. And you can just tell what this is. We have u, comma v instead of t. And when I move the camera, it's using spherical coordinates. So if you don't know what spherical coordinates are, you can look it up yourself. But essentially, in, in polar, we used a radius and one angle. But in three dimensions, we can use two angles and a radius. So that's basically what this is. So we have theta, phi, and distance, but I haven't specified any distance because I want it to be the same. And then I've added this axis, and then I'm gonna add the surface. So let's just see how this is gonna look. Okay, so we have a graph that looks like this, but that's because the u min and u max are only positive. So why don't I change this? So I'm going to say u min is equal to, let's put it on negative three. u max is equal to three. v, v min is equal to negative three. v max is equal to three. And if I put this all together, we should get a nice little three parabola thing. I forgot the name for it. Yeah, there we go. And one thing we can do is we can actually rotate the camera. So I can say self.begin begin ambient camera rotation. And I can change the rate. So if I want it to be faster, I can say this rate is equal to 0 0.04. Now I'm not going to render this because it actually takes a really long time to render uh, 3D graphs. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a animation that I made for a Gabriel's Horn video. So here I have the video up, and this is just a standard 2D graph of y is equal to 1 over x. But what I did was I wait for it. I rotated the graph. It's playing. Is it playing? There we go. I rotated the graph, and look how the thing is rotating. So that's what begin camp ambient camera rotation does. And after you do that, you can wait a bit. So I can say self that wait, say 10 seconds. And it's gonna do the rotation for 10 seconds. Yeah, you can experiment with this yourself. I encourage you to try different things. And yeah. Yeah, I want to do the same thing right now. Um, I was setting some stuff up and he basically showed you the same thing with Gabriel's horn. Um, yeah. I was trying to set up, yeah, an ambient camera rotation. Um, I also have a Gabriel's Horn video planned with, with Zach over on um, Sexstar's channel. And I was basically using Vivek's source code a tiny little bit for that because I didn't know how to set up par parametric surfaces and stuff like this. So it was really helpful and I was able to set it up overall. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting thing using the camera rotation. To be honest, it's it's kind of weird using it. So when I first tried it out, I was trying for like one hour to get the camera rotation right because it just looked so weird. You can't really tell um, if it's rotating in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. It's, it's kind of weird if you just look at the animation. So it really takes a while to get used to the camera rotation and setting it up. I don't know if you had any problems with it before, but it's kind of terrible. To be honest. 
yeah, Grant himself has said that uh, he doesn't think Manum is a good way to do 3D graphing. He said that he personally doesn't use it himself, and he uses something called Graffer on macOS, which is quite a really good application. So if you're on a Mac, it comes pre-installed. You can just open Graffer, and there are a lot of really good 3D tools you can use for that. I don't know any good tools for Windows, but I'm sure someone in the comments or Papa Flammy knows a few tools. Probably. There's probably someone who knows a bit of stuff. Or you can make use of Blender, for example. I mean, Blender's always a good choice. Yeah takes a while to get used to it, but it really does its job. You can also use Unreal Engine or something. There are so many ways to, to 3D animate in some way. But yeah, it's yeah. it's really weird to 3D animate with Menem, but if you just want to create something like a parametric surface, like with Gabriel Torn or something, it, it does the job, it's okay. I mean, it's just for demonstration purposes and you get the point across. Just take a look at, at Vivek's Gabriel's Horn video. Link will be down there at the top of the des description. And yeah, you can see for yourself how it turned out. So we don't know what we are going to talk about in the next uh, episode. I don't know if it's going to come out in like three weeks from now or two weeks from now. I really can't tell you right now, but it will be sure to come out and maybe for the 3D crafting we are going to do another dedicated episode. We are not sure about that yet. But uh, other than that there are other things we can talk about like uh, geometric things like squares, circles, creating boxes maybe in a 3D scene. There's a lot of stuff we can do and also the, the updating function is really important. Yeah, yeah maybe okay. we are going to make a episode we about talk that. About next video. Yes, I yeah. think that that should be a really important thing we should talk about. And yeah, other than that, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you, Vivek, for joining me yet again today. And yeah, all the source code and whatsoever can be found down there in the description, as always. Go over to Vivek's channel, please subscribe to him. And other than <laughs> that, Vivek, is there anything else you want to add? I. Uh nothing much uh, thank you all for your support <laughs> in this series we're having a lot of fun making this stuff yes we do it's it's a bit chaotic <laughs> because a lot of yeah. stuff is, is is not working out it's, it's just like with corona university zoom meetings and whatsoever <laughs> are are not turning out any good but we are trying to get things done i mean we are like sixteen thousand miles apart from each other i don't even know how how big earth's um circumferences so so i can just make a wild guess here but yeah we are trying our best and i hope you do enjoy the stuff and i wish you guys a flamble day see you in the next video ciao